Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down 360. We hit the Nasdaq off 68. S&Ps are off 36. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, I uh, sent you a chart probably about an hour ago. Did you get that one? I have it. Do you want to start with that uh, one? No, no. Actually, I wanted to. Uh, I just want to make sure you got it. But we'll start uh, chart number one, which is a monthly chart. Okay. And uh, I drew a Fibonacci relationship from the March uh, 2020 low, and uh, uh, if you can see it there, I have a 50 percent retracement. Yes. Uh, which was uh, pretty close. Didn't quite hit it in October of last year. Okay. But uh, that was a low. Uh, for that decline and the market kind of worked up has been working up since that time that I have a great big um, uh, line drawn to a down to the volume and I have a sinus drink there right yes we see okay. that yeah that if you notice that big volume on that it was a monthly chart so that was the Martha that was the month of March yep and I drew a, a, a um, neckline and if you can see it, we, uh, if you connect the highs going back to uh, learning how that neckline, it broke above that neckline with a sign of strength. So in a Weisskopf term, that's a, a breakout of a, of a neckline uh, confirming it, or confirming a breakout. Okay. So that neckline is around 405 on the monthly chart. Okay. So I got the, the breakout. So the market went up a little bit in April. Now we're in May, and we're kind of right, right back at the 405 area. Yes. So on a monthly ch chart, uh, I'm, I have a confirmation on a monthly chart that we broke above the neckline, and the neckline uh, is support. Now, if you go to the chart I sent you about you know an hour ago, yeah. Um, I got a, 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 a kind of a shaded area, pink area at that 405 area. And if you look at uh, late March on the volume chart, I got a red circle around a, a yes, volume. Yes, we uh, see that. Spike in volume. Yes. Right. And you compare that to the previous high, which is uh, another circle around a volume area in um, early March. I see that. You notice, yeah, you jump the creek with a sign of strength. That's, you know, that's Weisskopf method. Sure. So, so now that area should become support. And, you, and this is why I really want to stress. You never get a bottom without panic. If you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. And there's a lot of different ways you can define panic. You can do it by the VIX. Uh, if, you know, if you get spikes in VIXs, you know, you can do an RSI on it or a rate of change. Uh, you can also do it with the ticks, and you can also do it with the trend. And there's probably some other indicators you can do it with, but those are the three that I use. And I... Uh, once you get to a, a support area, if it's going to be support, you got to have panic. If you don't have panic, that support area is not going to hold. And I want to point out here, uh, we jumped above 405, and last week when we were talking, last Thursday, it says we're pulling down to that 405 area, and I'm saying it's going to hold support. And the reason why, you got panics in the trend. Any trend reading on the close of one point. Uh, 2 0 is considered panic. Well, you had panic on Wednesday, you had a trend of 1.35, then on Thursday, the day of the low, you had a trend reading of 1.68. Right. And uh, uh, Wednesday of last week, you had a 517 uh, 17 down tick reading, too. So you had ticks uh, showing panic, and you had two days of trend panic. Now, so the market rallies up, uh, hits a high on Monday. Now we're back into the pink area again. Yes. So now we had, on Tuesday, we had a trend close of 1.40, which is panic. Uh, not much on the ticks there, plus 174. Yesterday we had a 116 on the trend, which is near panic, but we had a 469 down tick readings. And I've, over the years, I came to the conclusion that if you get a trend reading of 1.2 and you get a down tick reading within one day of a panic trend reading, in other words, day before or day after, I call it a bullish combination, and that suggests the bottom will form within the same day as those readings, two as two as 
to as late as two days later. Well, the combination came uh, yesterday. We had a 4 and 6 9 down tick reading. Day before, we had 101.4 on the trend, which is a bullish combination. Okay. Suggesting the low will form either yesterday, which obviously that's not the case, as the market went lower today, it would be today or tomorrow. So, anyhow, we got panic back in the 405 area. And once the trend reaches panic area and the tick reaches panic area in a previous support area, normally you go back to that area, you'll get panics again. It's just yes, sport. That's exactly what we're having here. So, so Tim, opinion, let, let, let me ask you, with a, if we get our head wrapped around the volume here, now what's going to happen, we're coming into that area for sure, but the, the, the volume is going to expand. Mm, yeah, that's a good point because you got a gap there. Um, yes. When, you know, we talked on the on the uh, uh, radio last you know, last uh, Thursday. Right. The market gapped up on Friday. Right. And left an open gap, and I'm thinking, ah, crap. If anything, I hate gaps away from air, uh, sport areas, but a lot of times you come back down to them. Yes. But if you follow the volume scenario from last last uh, Friday, the market. Let's see. Yeah, Thursday is when the market bottomed. That's when we were talking. And Friday when the market gapped up. So Monday, Tuesday was a high, right? If you notice. The That's volume, correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah, volume dropped off Tuesday because the market hit a new high and volume dropped off. So there's no energy to the upside. So now we're going back down. And if you test the gap on 10% lighter volume, so last, the uh, would be the last, uh, the Friday's gap would be the volume you test against it. So um, I'm not. You should test the previous gap areas, like testing a previous high on 10% lighter volume. That that's usually implies resistance. If you test the gap area on 10% lighter volume, that's a support area. The day's not over yet. Yeah, no, no, I'm with we you there. I get it. I was just questioning the the aspect. I, I get it because what's happening right now. Let me just, the, the, we have divergence in a big way between the S&P and the, and the, you know, the Qs. Because what's happening, if we look at the three Qs, right, we're, we're coming into um, 65 million, and we're going to be lucky. We're going to do like only 50 million in the Qs, right? But okay. the S&P, the, the, so if we look at the SPY, and this is always tricky, folks, when if we have divergence, okay? They're coming in. And we've already done 71, and it only has to do uh, 85. So that, you know, the spy is going to end up doing 100 million. You know, so listen, just hold that thought. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break, and we're gonna come right back. We'll go through the other charts, um, and we'll go from there, man. As you said, the market's not the, the day's not over yet, right? <laughs> right, not yet. So. That's the bottom line. Stay right there, yeah. folks. Uh, Tim Ord and myself, we're going to be coming back. You can reach Tim at Ord-Oracle.com. That's O-R-D-O-R-C-L-E.com. Dow Industrials right now down 310, uh, 306. S&P is off 30. NASDAQ off 50. We're going to be right back. Welcome back, folks. So Dow. Dow is down at 296. Nasdaq's up 47. S&Ps are off 29. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking markets. So, uh, Tim, the, we have the chart up here um, of uh, you know the the two circles with the with the the volumes on it. Right. Do you want to continue okay. with this one, or do you want me to go yeah. to another chart? No, we'll continue just a little bit longer. You know that that gap did form last Thursday, and that gap on the SPYs, volume-wise, was 93 million shares, just a smidge less than that. But anyhow, it was 93 million shares. So if we're testing that gap today on 10% lighter volume, that'd add to the, the bullish situation because we got panic in the ticks and trend at around this 405 area. And if you get volume to match it uh, to be 10% lighter, which is also leans bullish, then there's uh, probabilities really increase that this 405 area will hold. And if you also look at the monthly chart, we, which we went over, because we did have a sign of strength through that neckline at 405, and that 405 should hold its support. And since you're showing panic in this this area, yeah, you know, I'm calling this a, probably a, a bottom. Now, if we didn't have on this pullback we had over the last three days, if we did not have the trend 
above 1.2 or tick readings above uh, minus 200, then I'm saying, yeah, we're going to blow through this 405 and go down lower. But since we already got panic, panic only forms at, at lows, then uh, I'm, I guess, confident that this 405 area is going to hold. Not saying today is going to be the bottom. No, I'm with but you. If we're, ten, I, so, but if we're 10% lighter volume, I'm saying probably today is the bottom. Yeah, so, so let know. me ask we'll you this. Oh, I, I'm trying to figure out whether we're on the, I'm on the wrong date or not. Because So there's, there's, I can see we, we had a sign of strength. At, look, I can't see that far on my chart because it's way too in front of me. It went from 404 yeah. to 409, and that, I'm talking the SPY now, that had 112 million shares, so we're definitely going to be way below that, but that's not the swing point, but that was a sign of strength going all the way back, it looks like, at the end of March. So that's where the and, gaps okay. are. Is that what we're talking right there? Well, there's a gap that formed um, Wednesday's close to Thursday's open of last week. Okay. That gap, I have it. Uh, I have it uh, labeled there on a, oh. and we're testing that. You see that pink area? Yes, I do. That shaded pink area. Okay. And I have a, a, a gap a line says gap on it, pointed to that area, which is. I last. get it. I get it. Okay. I don't. Yeah. Yes. Okay. See, we're, we're, te we're we're testing that gap right now. Oh, and I so see. You know what's happening, folks? Here, yeah, I'll show you this on this screen. Watch this. I see it, Tim. I, I got it now. What's happening is that when I look at this line chart that I have, so if you're looking at this line chart, folks, you're going to see it looks like there's not a gap, but there is because this at the bottom, which the, that's entry, yeah, because the bottom that we had hit 403.76 that day, and that's when it gapped up. Because see, this on the right hand side, folks, I'll get the cursor off it, that's where we actually closed. And then the next day we opened. I see what you're saying, Tim. Okay, and it, it didn't even. 403, that's so intriguing. So picture this, that yeah. that low, that, yeah, it went right to the gap, man, and closed it. Okay, cool, I right. got it. Yeah, we, were, yeah we, we did it today. Yeah. And, and that gap, which was be Thursday's volume, or yeah, be Thursday's volume, because that's the gap up from Wednesday's close, so you take Thursday's volume, which is 93 million shares, so you need to be around 10 percent lighter than 93 million shares today to say that gap ha gap has support okay so the day is not over yet we got you know 25 minutes to go yeah we're not going to do that so so to, to walk the listeners through this again so what you're doing even though the swing point is down there at the 403 78 you're saying that the next day we had the, the small sign of strength so we're going to use the 93 million number right. oh which totally makes sense i see and then now ward so the, the lower that was 406.74 so if we actually closed above 406.74 it'd even be better today right yep yeah yep. cool yep. okay it's because you're testing the gap there's right. another thing too today's thursday was it tuesday if you look at tuesday's volume yes i think we had we had a hundred and some million shares yes we did yeah uh, I, I don't know exactly what number I have 103, but that's what we numbers. had, yes. And we, we broke through that that low of, of Tuesday today. We didn't touch the low yesterday. That's correct. It came a little bit short. Right. We touched it, but we broke it through today. If volume's 10% lighter than yes. the previous low, that means a false breakout to the downside. Okay, so cool. So you're testing the gap, and it looks like it could be 10% lighter volume. Yep. I think it probably will be. And if you broke below Tuesday's low, on a 10 percent lighter volume that implies false breakout so and we also got you know again panics in the ticks and trend yeah. on this decline over the last three days if we didn't have panic in the ticks and trend this then probably we'll be hitting a lower but in this vicinity was probably where this bottom is it's the combination so I'm, I'm still, i got it cool man okay yeah cool. and okay. there's another thing too i do a lot of formations too and i'm thinking you know, we see the little high we had first of April. Yes. Um, you know, we went down, then we made another high in mid-April. Yes. And we went back down again. Then yep. we made, made a higher high, uh, what, Tuesday of this week. Right. And I'm thinking that three drives to a top pattern, which okay. has a downside target to where the pattern began. Right. Which is basically where we are. Okay. Yeah, and, it is. Right. Cool. Okay. And, and three drives to a top pattern is usually not a... Uh, long-term talking, but it's a timeout and an uptrend, I used to call it. Right, so, right. 
Nice. Um, but okay. anyhow, that's my feeling. I know we got about two minutes to go here. Yep. You want to flip to the gold chart real yes, quick? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I have it up. All right. Uh, this is, how do you know when the market's going to trend? Well, I can tell you. So the, the second window down from the top, or the top window is GDX. Okay. Next window down is the GDX advanced decline percent. Yep. With a 50-day moving average. Yes. If it's st When it stays above zero, the market's in an uptrend. And all those blue shaded areas Yes. are, are when that 50-day average is above zero. And there's a lot of little quirks in there that didn't stay above zero. But I just, made, I just put the ones that stayed above zero. Yes. And so those are um, ones. So anyhow... We've been above zero since last August, and oh. uh, we went down a little bit. Uh, I don't know, looks like about February or or something. Then we turned right back up, and we're back above zero again. And we're actually gaining ground right now. Today's reading was had been higher over the last two days. So, in my opinion, another impulse wave. Even though we did correct here over the last couple of weeks, the indicator in general stayed above zero. So we're still in an impulse wave, and we're going on to, well, we're in May, so we're going on to, what, eight months, nine months of, of rally here. And so far, as long as these indicators stay above zero, the market is in an impulse wave to the upside. Uh, so this rally, what I'm saying is there's no sign of a top here, even though we, we consolidated here over the last couple of weeks. The up-down volume advanced client indicators remain above zero, suggesting this impulse wave has further go to the upside. And, of course, the consolidation is helpful because that's building cause, too, Tim, right? Yep, that's building cause. So. Listen, folks, our man, Mr. Tim Moore, is going to be doing a workshop for us. He's going to basically come in, give us a lot of great education, so you stay tuned for that. Tim, you have a great weekend, safe weekend. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you next Thursday. All right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.